Today, the famous Kraft TV cameraman focuses on outer space for another exciting adventure in the world beyond tomorrow. Control deck to all stations. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. Minus five. Four. Three. Tom Corbett's Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas. This is the age of the conquest of space, where today Tom Corbett and his unit mates prepare for a mission of danger. Their assignment, Mercury. Guy. Tom, this is Astro. What are the temperature ranges on Mercury, the point we're going to? I don't know, Astro. Uh, on the dark side, about 300 degrees below zero, and uh, above 700 on the sun side. Uh, I've got to have more specific information than that. Why? I want to set up the heating and cooling systems for maximum output before we blast off. Well, check with TJ. He has all that information in the astrogation manual. Right. Check in. A bird brain. Check in. TJ, wake up, blast you. Yeah, what do you want? Look up the range of temperatures for the twilight zone of Mercury. Tom says you'll find it in the astrogation manual. Oh, okay, I'll call you back. I want it now. Okay, okay. What are you doing, bucking for a medal? Sorry, Eager Beaver, we don't have that section. We haven't been to Mercury in a long time. Never mind where we've been. Get it, Sleeping Beauty. I gotta have that dope before we blast off. All right, don't fuse your tubes. I'll have Captain Strong bring it over on his way from spaceport control. Oh, you will, huh? It would be asking too much, I suppose, for you to go over and get it? Entirely too much, space boy. Just relax. Rocket cruiser Polaris to spaceport control. Check in, please. Spaceport control of Polaris, go. Uh, listen, this is Cadet Thistle. Could you do me a favor? A favor? Yeah, we need the section on Mercury from the astrogation manual. And when Captain Strong comes in to sign the log before blast off, would you give him a copy and have him bring it over, please? It would save me a lot of trouble. Why don't you come over and get it yourself, Cadet? Well, I'll tell you, pal, we're about to make a big hop out to Mercury, and I got so much work to do, I can't be bothered with these petty details. Well, in that case, Cadet Thistle, I'll try to help you. Now, will you do me a favor? Sure. Sure? Will you please inform the other members of the Polaris unit that Captain Strong has been reassigned and will not be in charge of this operation? And that another officer is to be the unit commander. Will you do that for me, Cadet Thistle? And will you tell them that I am going to take Captain Strong's place and that my name is Major Connell? Did you get the name, Cadet? Major Connell, and transmission. TJ. TJ, check in. TJ. Uh -huh. Listen, did you hear who T.J. was I just talking I certainly about? did. T.J. Hey, fellas, have you guys ever heard of a Major Connell? Have we ever heard of Major Connell? Yeah. Everybody's heard of Major Connell. He's the roughest, toughest, meanest officer in the whole Solar Guard. He's as hard as space steel and as strong as an ox. He's not afraid of anything or anybody. He thinks space cadets are the lowest form of animal life. And you asked him to bring you the manual. T.J., I could murder you. Easy, mm -hmm. easy. Down, boy, down. Let's not get carried away. Well, you'll be carried away when he gets through with you on a stretcher. Well, how should I know he was supposed to be such a tough... Never mind that now. Now, look, let's get ready for him. You two police the ship. Make sure that everything's shined up. Well, what are you going to do? To try and prevent a catastrophe and get that manual before Connell does. Now, you know something, Astro? What? I think you and Tom are pulling my leg. Pulling your leg, huh? Yeah, nobody could be that tough. Listen, I'm warning you right now, TJ. Before this trip is over, you're going to be a sadder but wiser little space boy. Mm. Sadder, yes. Wiser, I have my doubts. Uh, well, well, welcome aboard, Major Connell. Thank you, Cadet Astro. And this, I presume, is Cadet Thistle. Yes, sir. Here's the manual you requested. Uh, thank you, sir. And since you were too busy to take the trip for it the first time, when we 
you return for Mercury, you will do it 100 times. Aye, aye, sir. Where's Cadet Corbin? Uh, he went out, sir, to uh, check the blast deflectors. He'll be back aboard in a minute. All right, now get this. We're bound for Mercury. And we're on a job where one slip can cost a man's life. But there won't be any slips, will there? No, sir. No, sir. All right. Now we race ship in exactly 17 minutes. Call me three minutes before blast off. Astro? Yeah. Tough. Venus in two hours and 23 minutes. And transmission. Uh, just a meteor to starboard, Tom, about 400 miles away. No problems. Cadet Thistle? Yes, sir. Thistle, I admire you. You are truly talented. Uh, thank you, sir. You know, I don't know of another spaceman who could astrogate a rocket cruiser with his feet. Were your ancestors monkeys, perhaps? No, sir. I don't think so, sir. Then it could be only one other explanation for your behavior. Yes, sir. You are the laziest space that ever took to the deep. And I have just a remedy for that, Cadet Thistle. Remedy, sir? Fifty demerits to be worked off, polishing brass and bright work throughout the ship. You are the most disgusting example of a rocket jockey that's ever been my displeasure to work with. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Look at this power deck. It's filthy. Filthy, sir. Yes, and look at yourself. You look more like the bottom of a grease bucket instead of a space cadet. Well, you see, sir, the reactors need it. I'm not in for excuses. Now, get yourself in this place cleaned up before the next watch or you get another 25 demerits. Another 25, sir? Yes. You just got 25. Back to radar bridge, check in. Radar bridge, I. Standard report, TJ. On course, on speed. Right. What's our position, Corbett? Southwest quadrant, Venus orbit. Section K, first flight plan. Time? On schedule, sir. Our ETA, Mercury touchdown? Two days, 16 hours. Well, that's very good, Corbett. Thank you, sir. But I'm logging you 20 demands for being a half a minute late and making a standard report. Blast it, this is gonna be a tight ship and I don't know the reason why. destination in exactly 12 hours. It will only take me three minutes to explain our mission. As you know or should know, Mercury only rotates once in one revolution around the sun. Therefore, it keeps one side towards the sun constantly. Now, the average temperature of the sun side is what, did it ask you? Uh, uh, above 700 degrees Fahrenheit, sir. And the temperature of the dark side, away from the sun, Thistle! Uh, 300 degrees below zero, sir. Very well. Now, because of these extremes in temperatures, our destination must be the twilight zone of Mercury. The only area of fairly moderate temperature on the entire planet. However, Mercury in its 88-day orbit around the sun weaves and wobbles erratically. Sometimes the twilight band is extremely hot, and sometimes extremely cold. Depending on the angle of the planet of the sun, our mission will be to find the area of least change, of most moderate temperature. Do you understand? I yes, sir. sir. if you don't mind my interrupting, uh, may I ask the reason for this mission? I'd have logged you a hundred demerits if you hadn't, Corbett. Mercury is the closest place that man can make a prolonged and detailed study of the sun. Now, the purpose of our mission is 
to find the best possible locations for permanent installations for our scientists. Well, that sounds simple enough. I uh, think, sir. You mean you hope? Now, it is vitally important that we land at the precise position I've indicated in my flight plan, when the twilight zone will be farther away from the sun. This will give us ample time to make our test before the zone swings back. Is that clearly understood? Yes, right, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, you know what our mission is and how important it is. So pay close attention to detail and try to act like spacemen. In 12 hours, we go to work. <laughs> Sounds simple, eh? T.J., control to radar bridge. Radar bridge, I... Let's have uh, the approach orbit for touchdown, T.J. Well, I can't right now, Tom. What do you mean you can't? I need it. I've got to plot our deceleration. Well, you'll have to wait. I just can't give it to you now. Now, look, T.J., we're only an hour away from Mercury. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm busy. I'll give you the orbit as soon as I can. Is that pistol? Sir. What's the lane giving corporate opposition? Well, sir, well, when I started to plot the approach, I found something strange here. Yes, I see something strange too, Cadet Thistle. Something strange in the space, Cadet. Not only do you, do you shirk your duty and risk the lives of others in doing it, but you try to cover up with silly excuses. Sir, I've got a very good reason. I'm sure you have. Right now, all I want to do is put the ship down on Mercury. And I can't do that without an approach of it. Now, do you get that information to cover it or must I do it myself? Sir, if you'd only give me a chance to explain, I'll be able Cadet to... Cadet Thistle, get off the bridge. You're relieved of duty until further notice. Yes, sir. Attention on all hands. Attention. Stand by for touchdown. that time. Whatever made you want to argue with him? Why didn't you just give him the orbit and let I go I couldn't. That? I didn't have it. Well, why didn't you have it? Didn't you know what would happen if you goofed? I didn't goof. I was just checking to make sure the approach he planned was okay, and I found Listen, out he... Listen, T.J., you should know Major Connell well enough by now. You, you don't check anything that he's planned. You just go ahead and do it and keep your mouth <laughs> shut. Okay. Okay, from now on, I'll keep my mouth shut around here. Oh, hi, Tom. What's our schedule now? Why, well, Major Connell and I are going outside to make those tests. You fellows stay aboard. Now, what are we supposed to do? Just wait for us to get back and keep those reactors hot in case we have to blast off in a hurry. How long do you plan to be out there? Only two hours. Connell doesn't want to take any chances on being caught out there when this area swings back toward the sun. Oh, he figures everything, doesn't he? That's right, T.J. And if you don't mind my saying so, you should, too. You should have known he'd blast these tubes when you didn't have that approach orbit ready. Listen, Tom, I know my job. I want to make sure he was right. Okay, I... okay. Now, I haven't got any time to argue about it now. Connell's waiting for me, but uh, you better just hope he cools off by the time we get back. All right. So long, fellas. So long. Tom, wait a minute. Hmm? Listen, watch yourself out there. Don't take any chances. Well, that hotshot major is only human, you know. He can make mistakes, too. Oh? Okay, T.J. Hey, what did you mean by that crack? Just what I said. Yeah? Do you know something that we should know? Me? How could I know? The Major's the only guy who knows everything around here, isn't he? Now, oh, come on, let's go topside and have ourselves a jazzy game of dominoes. I have kept you waiting, Major Connell. I was giving Astro and T.J. their orders. All right, Corbett. Now, here's our plan of operations. We'll circle this whole area in a wide circle, using the ship as a center. You take that side, I'll take the other. Count out your steps and every thousand yards. Take a reading of the subsurface temperature using a thermocouple. Note the time and composition of the ground. You got that? I have, sir. All right, we have to move fast. We only have two hours. So move out. Right, sir. Boy. Will you look at that place out there? Bleak, barren, not a sign of life. Huh. I'm just as glad Major Connell had me stay aboard the ship. <laughs> How about you? Any place, as long as I'm not near him. Uh, How long have I been out there? 
Half an hour? Still got lots of time. I sure hope so. Connect Corbett to Major Connell. Check in quick. Corbett to Connell, acknowledge. Corbett to Polaris. Come in fast. Polaris here. Go ahead, Tom. Astro, see if you can raise Major Connell on the main audio transmitter. Okay, what's the matter? Well, somehow we're in the wrong spot on this twilight zone. What? It's beginning to swing back towards the sun. And I can't contact Connell to warn him. Okay, I'll get on it right away. Listen, Tom. You come right back to the ship. Don't you go out looking for him. Stop the talking and get on that communicator and get TJ on the radar scope to see if he can pick him up, too. And hurry. I'm beginning to feel the heat already. End transmission. Polaris to Major Connell. Polaris to Major Connell. Come in, sir. Check in, please. This is Astro calling Major Connell from the Polaris. Come in, sir. Acknowledge. Any luck, TJ? Well, the only thing I can see are Mercurian stalagmites, and they all look like Major Connell. Yeah. How about you? Nothing but static. Polaris to Major Connell. Acknowledge. Come in, sir. Is Connell back yet? No, and I haven't been able to raise him on the audio, Severy. All right, something must be wrong with him, then. He must know that we're swinging back towards the sun. Unless he's too stubborn to admit he's made a mistake. What do you mean, mistake? We've landed in the wrong place. We've what? Well, I was afraid of this when I was planning our approach over, but that's why I didn't give it to you. I wanted to make sure. Well, why didn't you say something? I tried to, but Major Connell wouldn't listen. You wouldn't even listen. Now Mercury's swinging back. If we don't blast off in less than a half an hour, we'll never get off. Why not? Well, by that time, the temperature in the skin of the ship will be up around 500 and getting worse. Astro can tell you what that'll do to us. Well, I'd have to use the full generator output to keep the ship's cooling system working. There wouldn't be enough juice left for a blast off. All right. Astro, get below. Stand by to raise ship in 15 minutes. TJ, you handle the controls. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you going to do? I'm going back out there and find Major Connell. Oh, hold it, pal. If you go out there, I go too. Yeah, well, I'll go. There's no time for arguments. Now, we need this ship, and it's got to be ready and in condition to blast off. If we all go out there looking for Connell, we'll just bring him back to an oven. Well, let Astro stay. I'll go. No, this is an order. You stay on this ship. And if we're not back in 20 minutes, you'll blast off. Circle the planet and come back looking for us later. Yeah, what's left of you, you mean? If I can't make it back, we'll hold up somewhere. Now, listen, Tom. No more arguments. We've wasted enough time already. Now, remember what I said. Blast off in 20 minutes. Never make it, Astro. Never. Polaris. Polaris to Major Connell, come in, sir. Polaris to Major Connell, acknowledge. Oh, what's the use? How much time we got left? Ten minutes. Boy, it feels like the inside of an oven already. Listen, I'm gonna go, go below and start nursing those generators along. We gotta have enough power for a blast off. Wait a minute, you're not gonna leave them out there, are you? You know what'll happen to the ship if we don't blast off? Well, yeah, but you... No buts. We gotta save the ship. Listen, is it gonna help Tom and Major Connell if we save the ship? Will that help them? I don't know, but if we don't save it, it certainly won't help them. We're running away. We're leaving them here. Don't you think I know that? Blast it. Tom means as much to me as he does to you and maybe more. How do you think I feel about this? All I know is you're ready to walk out on them. I am going below to prepare to raise ship. We'll use the standard blast-off procedure. Feed reactant at D9 rate. And when we get into space, hold a steady orbit over this area. Is that clear? Yeah, very clear. Polaris from Corbett, check in. Hello, Tom. Have you found Connell? Yeah, I found him. About 100 feet away. Something's wrong with him, too. He's lying flat on his face. Well, get to him quick. I will, TJ, but listen. It's awful bright out here. I can't see the ship. It's so bright, I can't see anything. Well, how are you going to get back? I don't know. Maybe you and Astro better blast off. I'll take cover somewhere. Now, wait a minute. I got an idea. Now, listen. Keep your helmet intercom wide open. Keep listening. I'll get back to you in two minutes. Do you understand? Yes, I got you, TJ, but whatever you're going to do, hurry. Oh, well, you're down right. I'll hurry. Major Connell. Major Connell, can you hear me? Corbett, what are you doing here? Never mind that, sir. Are you hurt? No. He got me. Too weak to move. All right. All right. Let's see if I can get you up, sir. Come on, sir. Get it. Go over in the morning. You're back on the ship. I'll go back to the ship, sir, with you. Now, Corbett, if we do get back on the ship, I promise you more demerits. Then you can work off in the next ten yes, years. Thank you, sir. But let's see if I can get you walking now. I said if you can come out for me, I can look. Oh, Tom, check in. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, TJ. Have you reached Connell yet? Yeah, I got him. But uh, listen, can you help us back to the ship? I still can't see a thing. Yeah, well, maybe I can see you now. Start moving. Well, in which direction? Any direction. Just move. Okay, here goes. 
That's it, Tom. I got you on my scanner. Now turn right and keep walking. That's it, Tom. You're right on a beam now. Keep moving that way and you'll be home free. How much time left, TJ? Don't you worry about the time. Just keep putting one, one foot in front of the other. That's all you have to think about. I said, Major, one foot in front of the other. Follow TJ's advice. I can't go on. <laughs> what are you going go to? Tom, what's the matter? Why'd you stop? Oh, it's the Major. He's awfully weak. Oh, he is, huh? I thought he was such a rock. I'm shocked. I'm tough guy. Why, that miserable little space grub. Come on, Corbett. Hi, guys, sir. That's it, Tom. Keep coming. Uh, oh, what do you left? To your left, more. That's it. Keep moving that way. You'll be here soon. TJ, what are you doing here? We blast off in four minutes, and I told you... Oh, you're the Astro. We'll blast him with a full throw. What? Take a look. There's Tom and Major Connell. I'll be at the end of the block in less than three minutes. Great galaxy. TJ, you're terrific. Well, you're just finding out now? TJ, check in. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. We're all right. I can see the ship. Look, stand by to blast off as soon as we're in the airlock. You bet. See you on the ship. Well, what are you waiting for, you big Venusian lunkhead? Go below and get up ahead of steam. Aye, aye, sir. Soldex all stations, flying free, clear, and easy. Gravity generators on. Everybody relax. Hey, Tom, are, are you okay? Look. Yeah, just fine, TJ. Oh, good. And I'm all quite all right, too. Well, I'm some... glad to hear that, man. Yes, I'm sure you are. What's our heading? We're holding over around Mercury, sir, until uh, further orders. Nice of you to wait orders for a change. Where's that Astro? All right, sir, he said he'd be up as soon as he put his station on automatic. That Astro reporting is ordered, sir. Time. Tan Hut! Now, this operation hasn't been very successful. Therefore, we will try it again. And this time without any mistakes. Because we all know who's to blame for our failure, don't we? Well, don't we? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Cadet Corbett. How many demerits have you logged so far? Eighty-five, sir. And you, Astro? Hundred and fifteen, sir. Thistle. Two hundred, sir. Making a total of four hundred demerits. A very sad showing. But for my error, I hereby lock myself four hundred demerits, which cancels out crew penalties. You know, Major... I didn't give orders to break your eggs, Thistle! <laughs> Gentlemen, my compliments and my thanks. The score is now even. Except for the 50 demerits you just got, Thistle! Don't forget to be with us for next week's exciting adventure of Tom Corbett's Space Cadet. Starring Frankie Thomas and featuring Al Markham and Jack Grimes.